halfway through, so hopefully you can build a robot that can test for that. There are several types of game pieces that you might need to get up to the top. We have cargo balls, these are little wiffle balls, pretty light. And we have waste cargo balls that you need to dispose of properly. The goal is to get the cargo balls onto your ship, which is the spotter will do while sitting down. The spotter is not allowed to stand up this year. The spotter must sit down, but they can rotate or otherwise ship their cargo to where the robot will be connected to the elevator. Then the, the robot can then take the cargo, hopefully safely, to the top and place it into the plastic bin. You may notice there are holes cut into the edges of these bins. This was actually intended to assist the referees in resetting the fields, but if your ball rolls out of that, it has fallen back to earth and is therefore not usable. So you have to be careful about that. <laughs> the waste cargo does not go into space. That's just a biohazard. This can be disposed of by having your robot place it back on the shipping, or the ship, I guess I should say, back to the main land and disposed of properly. We have other items that you can also take into space with you. Up here, these plastic bottles are depleted fuel containers. Your goal is to grab one of these if you can, bring it all the way down, and have your robot place it into one of these, I guess, uh, fuel repositories. Just uh, right here, it sits like that. These green bottles represent full fuel containers. Your goal is to have them go up into space and connect into the midway station. Oh, by the way, that's called a midway station. I guess I didn't say that before. We also have solar panels. I'm going to keep turning myself. Solar panels, just to upgrade the midway station, you can carry these up and place them on one of these two sides PVC pipe. These score based on the number of PVC pipes that actually have them on. You can't score both on the same section. We also have habitation modules. It's like a brand new apartment for the astronauts that are up there. If you want to upgrade the midway station, you can carry these up and carefully install them on the habitation module connection. But you have to be careful with these, these are kind of fragile. Additionally, we have a T structure. You can carry this up, place it in between the PVC pipe, twist it 90 degrees, and let it hang. Otherwise, it pretty much doesn't score. That's pretty much the gist of it, as far as the manuals are concerned. Some of you may notice there is a row here. This is fully intended for your robot to connect to. This actually represents the carbon nanotubes that are going up 62,000 miles in space. You are not required to use this, because the unit right here also represents the space elevator. But you can use this to help pull your robot up. It doesn't actually have to connect to the unit strut. However, you do have to harness your robot with a safety strap. Your robot does not, does not have to be fully within a 24-inch frame on the starting point like it usually is. It doesn't have to be within a 24-inch cube, but you, don't, you are not confined to a particular spot, so long as you're not touching the ground. Halfway up, you may notice some markers here. Anything below this 5-foot mark, or approximately 5-foot mark, is considered the ground area. Everything above is space area. Technically, you can fly up to the beginning of the space area, but anything else you are required to use the space elevator to get up to the mid of the station. You are not allowed to interfere with your fellow competitors. It is intended to be almost impossible, though theoretically possible, but there should be no interference with other teams whatsoever. And that is pretty much it, I believe. Yeah, this, uh, I will entertain a few questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs>
on game day, all of the fuel containers will be pressurized, mainly to make it consistent with your ability to grab it and won't be squishy. But today they are not pressurized. It is your goal to come up to some of the volunteers and tell them how you think we're going to pressurize these bottles. I think Robin will greatly be entertained by that. But it's a science experiment. In fact, if you read the rules, it will tell you how to do it. So, I must stress, read the rules. Do not ask a question on the Q&A without having read the rules first. There are game-specific rules and game-generic rules. If you ask a question that is clearly listed in the rules, you will be mocked mercilessly by the person answering the questions. <laughs> All right. I'll probably ask just a few, answer a few quick questions. Anyone have a question? Hands up. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are the buckets for the PVC pot? Good question. That is actually not part of the fuel. I apologize for that. This is intended for the referees to use after the game to help reset the field. We can easily get the balls down and up and climb up on the ladder. So this is not actually part of the field, but very good question. Someone over here. Yes, sir. Um, if we do choose to use the uh, string hanging down to help go up, how long do we have to connect to this? If you choose to use the unobtainium carbon fiber, to get up to the top. How long do you have to connect it to the robot? Standard 30 seconds. You're allowed 30 seconds before your match to get everything set up. So that includes the attaching to the human strut or whatever you wish to use, attaching to your safety cable, which hopefully should be less than a couple seconds to attach it to assembly the robot correctly. Place it in the starting area and enter your starting zones. Anyone over here? Alright, anyone over here? Ah, scoring values. Is that really important? Uh, I, will, I will admit, I might be a little unclear in my head on some of these, but pretty much everything is worth less than 10 points. If that helps you. The, uh, oh, fantastic. The, the regular cargo balls, if you actually get them up into the midway station, are worth three points. The waste cargo balls, if properly disposed of, are worth one point. If you successfully attach a full fuel container to the top, it is worth seven points. If you successfully bring a depleted fuel container down, it is worth five. If you accomplish a complete trade of the two fuel containers, it is worth an extra four point bonus. If you successfully mount a T-structure, it is worth 8 points. The solar panels are worth 6 points per PVC stud, per, per solar panel mounting stud. So you can't have two on one stud. Well, you can, but you only score for that stud. And the habitation modules, being viewed as potentially the hardest thing to store, are worth 12 points. So this is the biggest pool modules. If, if you can score a cargo ball, a solar panel, and a T-structure, you get an extra 9 points. If your robot is completely below the space zone at the end of the match, you get a point. And if you can actually make it to the top, to where the midway station is, you see these little orange flags. The referee sees that actually move. That indicates that you have successfully reached the top. That is worth two points. And that's pretty much it for points. All right. Maybe one or two more quick questions. Yes, ma'am. How long is the match? That is a standard question. Please read the rules. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
Oh, fantastic. We do actually have a low altitude, low altitude midway station that you can use to view. It apparently just got a much higher in altitude. <laughs> right. The habitation module will actually slip onto one this end of the PVC fire. The cargo balls will be placed here. The solar panels will be placed on these two sections here. And the T structure will go up through two pieces of PVC and twist it 90 degrees. That's such a great space station. That's why we got to build one. That's why you got to build one. That's why you got to build one. One more question. If you have more questions, the team builds it. There's a design team that helps with the design. Yes, sir. Yeah, there's our spirit team.